This is James Elder for IPL TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. I'm in Sheffield today. With me, I've got Dominic Ingle, head trainer from the Ingle Gym. Are you the head trainer now? Does that count officially as a head trainer? No, I'm, well, what about the only trainer? <laughs> How does that sound? I, I do the training, so whether, whether you're in charge or not, uh, I don't know. There you are. There we are. Good performance tonight for your man Lee Wood against Josh Wow. As you said, Josh Wells never in a bad fight. We know what he's about. He's a very tough man. How do you think Lee Wood dealt with that tonight? <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he got a few goals to exercise tonight. You know, after the performance nearly two years ago against Gavin McDonald uh, in Doncaster. You know, Gavin's gone on from strength to strength, British, I think, and fighting for the European tonight, or defending his European. And, uh, you know, Lee's, Lee's leg behind. But tonight he boxed Josh Whale, and, you know, got a draw with Gavin McDonald and then lost the points on him. So he's, he's, a, he's a good operator. Uh, Josh Whale and I think Lee tonight, you know, beat him quite easily. But well, he did beat him easily, beat him eight rounds to two. We saw the switch hit in the obviously your gym is very well known yeah. for. Lee seems very natural with that style and he is his sort of jab and the way he was throwing them little soft shots. Yeah. Is that something you've worked on before, Andy? No, he, to be honest he's always done it. I just think, you know, the, the first time Lee got his uh, his his time under the, the bright lights. You know, he, he, he got the weight wrong, possibly. And, you know, he'd never been down at that weight before. I think he'd only had one fight down at that weight. So I think Was that he fought Gavin McDonald? When he, when he fought Gavin, yeah. And, you know, he, being a good boxer, being a good trainer, you got, you got to address those issues, go back to the drawing board, which Lee did. You know, he'd torn his bicep in that period of time between then and now. And he's, he's come back from a lot, and uh, he's got himself back on top. Uh, addressed the issues, you know, changed his diet, done, done lots of things, and you know, tonight was the make or break for him. If he hadn't have beat Josh Will tonight, you know, really should have, you would have to consider packing up. Where does he go from here after a good win against Josh Will? Obviously, good for his confidence, good to get him back out again. Where does he go from here? Well, he's obviously now in line for a British title, so we'll see how that pans out. But in the meantime, we'll try and keep him busy. You know, that could be could be early or late next year. So. You know, we'll see how, how the dust settles and we'll take it from there. How's Kel Brooks rib? Obviously, he was meant to be headlining tonight. Can you give us any? Yeah, any he's. he's uh, we've had him. He's, he's been to see a physio, uh, a guy called Derry Souter, who's a um, physio for uh, Jessica Ennis, and uh, he's going to give him a couple of treatments. He says, you know, it's it's got a lot of soft tissue damage around that rib area. Uh, he can't get punched on for it, punched on it for about two or three weeks. But Kel's, you know, he can still exercise. He can still do biking, rowing machines, running, just not sparring. So. You know, he seemed tonight. He's in great shape, as you can see. He was ready for tonight, and you know, he's got another, uh, you know, a couple more weeks. If Eddie can sort something out before Christmas, obviously, we'll try and get him out all being well with the rib. So, are you expecting him, from your point of view, to get out before Christmas, or is it oh, a case hopefully. of day by day? No, hopefully, we're going to see how the next two weeks go. He's had a week, um, you know, uh, just taking his, his training steady. Now he's picking it up, and we're just going to see what happens when we, we put a bit of load on him and he starts getting back into full, into full training. Obviously not sparring, but you know we'll see how we go. And then he says, you know, if we can get him out before Christmas and he's in, in fit state to do it, uh, then we'll do it. But we're not taking any chances. Kel is obviously the IBF world champion. He obviously does need the right preparation to take on someone like Diego Chavez to take him on and not be 100% right. Wouldn't no, be the best job no, for you as a trainer? No, it's not what it? you do. You can't waste. You know, he's trained for 16 weeks for this for this fight. Um, you know, you can't you can't just jump in there because you've done the time. He's, he's spent a lot of money on training. Have sparring partners, travel, camps, everything. But you know, it took him a long, long time to get there. It's been a great journey, and he intends to stay there for a few years yet. So it's no good, you know, just jumping in willy nilly and hoping for the best. You know, when you go up against the guys like Chavez, you've got to be 100 percent prepared. You can't come out afterwards and you know have an excuse. You know, I'm a river and whatever. If, you, if you're not ready to fight, you shouldn't be in the ring. I was fortunate enough to watch Diego Chavez versus Timothy Bradley ringside. Did you watch that fight? And if so, what, what do you kind of take away from that, Chavez? He's a tough kid. You know, you've got to be smart with him, much like Lee Wood was tonight with Josh Warrington. If you stand and have a fight with Chavez, it's going to be an hard night's work. Uh, that's what Timothy Bradley did. And, uh, you know, you got a draw. Um, Thurman, you know, started to have a punch up with him for two or three rounds, then thought the better of it and got back to his boxing and picking his shots, hitting him with body shots and, you know, trying to counter him and using his jab and eventually brought Chavez down and stopped him in the knife. It, it was a tough fight up until then. All right, well, listen, we look forward to hearing some news imminently on Hell Brook, whether it is this year or whether it is the start of next year. No, no fighters like fighting in January or February, do they? So what, what happens if it's not if it's not in December? Well, whether you like it or not, you know, if that's the case, that's the case. He's got his manager coming up. Uh, I think they're fighting. The two guys are contesting for the for the uh, manager position uh, in November. And, you know, Kel's got to fight there within something like 90 days. So you're looking round about February then. So whichever way it is, whatever he does, he's got to train over Christmas. So. It's nothing new to kill, but we do it quite often. All right, well, listen, Mr. Ingo, I thank you very much for your time, sir, as always. And uh, we look forward to catching you out again real soon. No problem. Cheers, Dom. Thank you, mate.